Hello everyone and welcome to this stall build. I have just finished making this stall in my workshop. I've been clearing the workshop out and come across uh, several offcuts of timber which I thought would be fantastic as a small project to make a stall. Um, you can follow me through the video and I'll take you through the process of how I've made this fireside stall. Right, so from my workshop, here we have an offcut of beech along with four offcuts of oak. These have been pulled out of the offcut pile. They've been in the workshop for a very long time. And all these pieces are going to be the components I'm going to use to make my store. First things first, this beach is far too thick. So let's head over to the thicknesser. So what I'm looking to achieve in this build is to produce a store that in appearance is primitive, rustic, and has character. So achieving my desired thickness, let's take the beach and head over to the bench. I've just spent some time going over the top of this stall seat. There's, I don't know whether you can see on camera, but there are a number of pencil lines on here as I was trying to work as proportionate as possible, um, decide what I what I want to do, but anyway, I what what I have settled on is I'm going to come 40 millimeters in from either side and, and leave that as a flat top, and then that 40 millimeter line or between these two 40 millimeter lines, I'm going to concave the seat in the middle, and my actual um, leg positions are going to be here, 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 and here are circled. I've gone with a 15 degree uh, pitch on the legs. Um, and what I'll be using is my drill guide here. So what I'll do is I'll, with the pencil marks, I'll film this shortly, we'll line the jig up, um, select a force and a bit to, um, uh, to decide on my uh, tenon size, and we'll get these cut. I have my drill guide aligned to the pencil lines as per my setting out on top of the beach. Also, the drill guide is set at 15 degrees, which is my proposed leg angle. Uh, the deepest point of the concaved seat top is going to be 10 millimeters. So, setting my adjustable square, I've made a mark at that point, and then now I can get my steel rule. Because what I've done is line the edge of the clamps up with my pencil marks here and here which means that I can rest my steel rule in place, bend that down to my 10 mil, and then that allows me to draw this pencil line. And there we go. Um, so I have taken measurements from the top of the stall seat down to the concave line all the way through at these points. So we've got nine millimeters um, deep in the middle, for about eight, six millimeters and three millimeters at the other end. I've transferred these lines across the top. So I'm gonna get my drill bit and I'm gonna drill down for every row, the depth that we've marked here. So for example, the center line is gonna have nine millimeters drilled all the way through. Same here, eight millimetres all the way down this line, six millimetres, and then finally three millimetres at the end. All right, that's a series of all my nine millimetre holes. All I've done is use a bit of electrical tape in this drill bit. Um, my other uh, drill bit with the depth stops, um, I can't find that at the moment. So I'm going to repeat the process. Um, so what have we got again? We've got eight millimeters, six millimeters deep, and then three millimeters deep on this line, obviously for both sides. Oh, wonderful. All right, Jax. Hello. Right, so moving on to the carving wheel, having seen the holes that I drilled in the previous clips, 
as I'm working my way down once I reach to the bottom of each of the holes that I drilled this is how I gauge the profile of the concave area in the seat. I've just sharpened this, it's actually quite good. Let's flip this round. Right, liking that. Let's drop the blade down in just a bit, do a bit more. Right, it's a stoke shave to one side. Let's have a go with the scraper. Alright, that's starting to look very good. I'm pleased with that. So next I'm going to work on these bow ties. I made these off camera and obviously three of these are going to go through each of these um, splits. I was a bit concerned about this one here. If you look where the uh, mortise is in the seat ready to take the um, tenon on top of the leg, I was concerned that potentially like when we hammer, hammer the leg in and then hammer the wedge down it could cause this to split. But that does not go through the thickness of the beach, it's just on the surface, so I think we'll be fine with that. While I'm working these bow ties, I just want to take the opportunity just to apologise about any of the uh, sound issues with this video. It's my first YouTube video, so when you get to the end of it and when you consider leaving a comment or liking the video please go easy using my marking knife I'm just going to carefully score around each of the three bow ties So I'm now going to go and cut out these bow ties. I mean, this is the method that I use with the blue tape. Stick the blue tape down to the timber. And then what I do is use a mitre's mate to then glue the bow tie to the tape. Um, score around the outside. And then when you, as you saw in the last clip, when the bow ties are removed, it leaves this. So the blue tape, the lines in the blue tape is what I'm now going to cut to. just thought I'd show you what I do with the trim router so I've taken out a lot of the material from the center of where the bow tie is positioned and we'll use the chisels now just to remove the last of the material around the edges up to the, um, the blue tape. Well, these are all chiseled out let's take off the blue tape and then have a close look what we've done. And then what we'll do is we'll um, place them in and see how they fit. 
get them all glued up and then leave that to, I think, dry, um, dry overnight for tomorrow. Lovely, right. Right, now let's get these all glued in. Oh, it's a bit much, isn't it? I'm going to go and start the barbecue shortly. Sauce. Nice. Right, let's give that a quick sand. Right, and I quite like using these um, hand sanders. It's actually just like a Merca sanding uh, disc on there, but um, I quite like this because it's soft. That's the bow ties all glued in. Uh, flush cut, sanded, and then what I'm going to do now, just for the, just so it gives an idea of what it's going to look like when it's all finished, we can wipe on a bit of methylated spirit. Should bring out that. Look at that. Give you an idea of the contrast between the beach and the um, walnut bow ties. Right here we go, making a start on the legs. Um, I've actually cut the other three tenons and three shoulders on each of those legs already. This is the last leg. Um, I'm gonna we'll go through how I cut those other ones, uh, the process that I used in informing my tenons all by hand. I don't have a lathe, by the way. Wish I did, um, but unfortunately I don't. But it's a nice skill anyway to do do these by hand, it's good practice. So yeah, no, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get this one filmed. I wasn't gonna film all four legs. Um, I was contemplating on phoning my dad. My dad's got a lathe. Yeah. You all right, dad, what are you up to? Um, you are right if I bring four legs over and uh, to turn, turn four tenons? But it just meant jumping in the van, driving over there, um, cutting the tenons, <clears throat> bringing them back, back in the workshop, and it's just a lot of faffing around time-wise, so we'll, um, well, I've cut three already, so we'll cut the fourth one. Right, so first things first, get something straight. Anything we do, I mean, I've just got my scraper because it's laying on the bench and it's the closest thing to me. So we're going to just go from corner to corner just to mark the center. Oh, this corner's missing, I must guess that slightly. Right, there we go. 25 mil force and a bit. And place that in the middle. 
Right, and all I'm going to do now is just mark the 25 millimetre uh, circumference. Go down a bit deeper. Next thing I'm going to do is just mark the height of these. This is enough for the tenon to come through the top of the uh, storm seat. <coughs> Square. What I want to do is just mark the edge of my 25 millimeter Forster mark. All right, and then what I have been doing, it's not the only way to do it, it's just the way that I've been doing it. Um, this piece of softwood is screwed and clamped to the bench um, level vertically thus to hold this leg level. So what I'm going to do is just take this boat level of mine and what I want to do is just pull that pencil mark I've made at the top down. There. Same on this side. There we go. Right, now that we have a rough shape of the tenon, um, we are going to use a combination of a couple of sharp chisels. Another tool that I like to use is my um, Japanese Shinto, the rasp, which has a rough side and then the finer side. With the tip chisels, I'm going to be looking down on top um, where we can see the, the ring, 25mm circumference of the Forstner bit that we drilled earlier. We will then now get the chisels and just using that circular mark just take down bits of material at, you know bit by bit using the rasp we can go round the edges like so and, and use that to round off I won't do too much of that just yet um, and then another thing that I did was out of a scrap piece of timber I've used the same force in a bit drill a hole and then as I'm working my way down I can just regularly keep placing this on top just to make sure that I am working to the right um, diameter. Right, I'm happy with how this tenon fits through the, um, the mortise in the seat. What we'll do is we'll turn this upside down and we'll mark the shoulder to cut on the uh, leg. Simply using this scribe tool, I can go around each four sides of the leg and just mark with pencil, as you can see now. Um, that will give me um, an outside line that we can remove the leg from this stall and, um, and then cut the shoulder. Right, so the legs removed out of the stall seat and now we cut the shoulders. Be very careful at this point when using the saw um, as we're cutting on these shoulder lines. Just be careful with the depth that you cut down to because you do not want to accidentally cut into the tenon because this will compromise uh, the tenon strength.
With the shoulder cut, using the chisel, we can now just tidy up the bottom of the tenon down to the shoulder line. So the shoulder's cut, we dry fit the leg back into the stool seat. I'm really happy with how that looks. So now what we'll do is we'll finish work on the tenon. And there was me talking about not going too far with the saw, cutting the shoulder because as you can see, I've just cut into the tenon here, um, but never mind. So having just cut the strain relief hole in the tenon, uh, we'll next mark a line for our saw curve cut. So using my trusty Japanese saw, we can now cut down a line all the way down to the uh, strain relief hole. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take my scribe tool here and I'm just going to go around this tenon and pencil line a shoulder, a small, what will be like a circular shoulder. So as I'm shaping these legs, this is the line that I'm going to be working to as I work down the length of the leg to the other end. Using the electric plane, I'm just going to remove the bulk of the material down near to the circular shoulder mark that I just made. And after we finish with the electric plane, what we'll do is we'll jump back onto the hand tools just to fine tune the shape of the leg. So now that we've taken off the bulk of the material with the electric plane, and now using the number four Stanley plane, we can now work closely on refining the circular shape of the top of these legs. I'm now using the spoke shave. On the squared bottom end of the leg, I'm tapering down to our circular tops. Now I can start assembling the stall by gluing the tenons into the mortises. By giving the leg a twist in, we can really work that glue into the mortise. So you can see in the background that I have my steel toe cap crocs on while I'm using my Japanese saw to flush cut the last protruding leg tenon. And back onto the sander again, followed by the scraper. Right, I just want to show you this jig that I've made up and this is for cutting down the stall legs. We're right at the... Uh, last couple of stages of the build now um, but yeah I've made this made the jig the jig I've made to a height that's going to make the stall stand at approximately 12 inches or 12 inches is what I've measured it out for but if I show you how it works I won't go through the process of how I made the jig but what I'll do is we'll slip this on like so right so that will go there I'll push that up against the legs. I'm going to drill the jig down to the um, down to the bench. The stool's already um, all upside down, clamped to the bench top, so that's all nice and secure. And then what I'll do with the uh, Japanese saw is obviously rest rest the saw on the jig here and cut the two legs off on this side, and then we'll move the jig over to this side, do the same, and then that would ensure that all these uh, legs are all cut down to the same height. So when I flip it upside down and uh, stand it in place, fingers crossed, 
that all four legs will be touching the, uh, the bench top. moment of truth, see if the jig has worked. Right, let's turn this upside down. Right, that I'm really happy with. Those legs sit perfectly on that bench top. Right, so here we are, right at the end of this stall build. Super pleased with how that's turned out. I'm going to give this a final sand off camera, and then we'll uh, we'll bring it back to the bench top and give it um, a final coat of something to finish it off. Right, so for the finish, we are going to go with Osmo Oil, uh, 3032 Clear Satin, a blend of natural oils and wax. To see all these colours coming through in the timber is so satisfying. Uh, this piece of beech, the oak and the walnut have been laying around in my workshop for years. Um, I've been meaning to do this project for a long time. Um, so just soaking these oils and wax into the timber is really feeding, nourishing and reviving the wood. Once I've completely covered the stall with this first coat, I, um, I'm going to leave the stall in the workshop overnight for that to all soak in and, um, and dry off. And then what we'll do is we'll come back into the workshop the following day, apply the second coat. Um, the timber's not going to absorb as much, um, but we'll just seal the deal and then we'll take a look at the stall in its finished state. From a few offcuts of timber in the workshop, we now have our completed stall. It's been a lovely little project uh, to do. I hope you've all enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the video, please do um, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to be notified of any future projects or videos on this channel, then please do uh, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. And thank you for watching.